All right, it's Friday, and in this video, I'm going to cover some more updates to the account risk manager product for Ninja Trader. Guys, I'm just going to repeat this again. This is one indicator, I call it the accounts dashboard. It has two separate products available for purchase. One is called Duplicate Account Actions, which is like a trade copier. And the second is Account Risk Manager. So you can go watch some of my old videos or previous videos to see more details about the copier. But again, this is configured. I'm only showing a multiplier column. Right now I'm just copying one to one. I did take a few extra trades on these other accounts. I had submitted two micros in these. But then when this morning when I added them um, to the copy, uh, I traded, made four trades in and out one contract. Here, this is an accidental trade where the copier was turned off. That's why I have one extra trade up here. You can see how synced up these are across all the accounts today. I'm very pleased with how this has been working on the copy side. For the risk manager side, I added a feature for the funded accounts. So obviously you're not gonna do anything with evaluation accounts. Uh, all of us wanna be trading funded accounts. The point of the eval accounts, these are all blown or waiting to reset or uh, renew. But the point of this is we need to have a goal for our funded accounts. Right, and so I've decided my goal is going to be 55,500, and I configured it that way. You can see my from funded number is now showing next to the net liquidation. So, by from funded in this case, I mean that is the point. This is how much I have to make in these accounts before I'm considering them ready to withdraw. So I'll show you guys this in the inputs and it's just right down here underneath the account risk manager. This is what I'm calling performance accounts withdrawal goal. All right. And so right now this is set for all your performance accounts. If you have different account sizes, we'll potentially address that later. You can reach out to me. But yeah, this number is set to a goal for all the accounts. I think it could make sense to change this for individual accounts, but we'll address that later. So I also want to cover some more inputs in here because I want to make sure you guys understand everything. Um, up here are my coupons. I would appreciate if you guys would use these for Apex and then Lilu is coming. I have tested this with Lilu, it is working. Um, but I personally don't have any Lilu accounts yet. I had a friend let me connect to his account for testing and programming purposes. So, okay, now I'm gonna go through all these settings right now with just the new stuff. Coupon has been moved up there. Again, if you don't wanna see the my coupon in the corner, you can just uncheck this button right here. I'll show you this. But my coupon showing down here in the corner. You can click on that. All right, uncheck this. Click OK to just get rid of that, clean up your screen. First time you launch the indicator, when you hit the lock button, if you have Apex accounts, it is going to take you to the Apex website. I appreciate you guys' support um, with that affiliate link as well. I just want to be fully transparent about that. Um, all right. So basically that's the biggest thing I've added here. Well, one of the things is the ability to set that funded goal amount for your PA accounts. You also have a daily goal. So let's take a look at the daily goal column and the, and the changes I've made here. So now at the top you can click daily and goal and it changes to from goal. This is allowing you to see how many, how much in dollars you are from your goal for the day. This one here says goal because it's hit the $1,000 goal. Now, I wasn't using this today. I'm just showing this as an example. So you can see it's showing the difference between the amount of dollars that you're up or that you have until you reach that goal. And it's going to do the same thing on the loss side. I don't have losses today. In fact, down here, 
because I'm just down two dollars. You can see the goal is is crossed out for now, and it's telling you your ninety seven dollars ninety cents from the loss, which simply is set to a hundred dollars down here for each of these, just to display, just to demonstrate this. So again, clicking in the top here doesn't sort the columns, but it changes the display mode. So if you want to set a daily goal or loss, you have to have it set, daily loss or daily goal up here. Then to set, you just click and you rotate your mouse to set the amount for the daily goal. Same thing here, click, daily loss. All right. So, and then to clear them out, you double click. So once you're done setting these, and I'm gonna set, I'm gonna increase these. So I want you guys to see something here. I'm gonna put this at 2,000. We'll increase these up a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit this button. All right. So what this does, and I'm I'm still I'm not totally happy with this display, but it's a start. This is showing the progress toward your daily goal. All right. So this progress bar is showing and I'm going to and if you're in this mode you can also click here and change it to percent. So when I click in here if I'm have it set to from goal or from loss clicking in any of these cells toggles between percent and dollars. So this is how many dollars I am from the daily goal for this account and this is the percent that I'm from the daily goal for each account. As a reminder you can, how you enable this is you check the box. If the box is checked, it's gonna automatically clear the account, flatten everything when your daily goal is hit. So if I were to keep trading today, these accounts, if I have all these on, are gonna get flattened when my daily goal is hit. So this one has $390 to go, 405. This is all based on these daily goal settings right here. This checkbox is applicable for the loss and the goal. So if either loss or goal is set, checkbox is on, your account's gonna be cleared when the daily goal is hit. Now something else to consider, just like the close button works, you guys, like if you were to hit the close for the master account, it is not gonna close the follower accounts. Because if I'm clicking the close button on a single account, I'm gonna assume and this could be this coding could change later we might add an option for this but I'm gonna assume that you only want to close the account that you're clicking close for so when you do that you're closing the master account same thing here if your master account hits its daily goal it's not gonna liquidate the follower accounts not the follower accounts will not follow because that goal is only for the master account and that's the way it works at this point um, and so again, I know there's been a lot of you that have purchased this lately. I want your feedback. I'm gonna continue developing this within reason to continue adding features, but that's the way it's working for now. Um, and yeah, I think that basically covers all of the updates. You'll notice some different changes when you disconnect and reconnect and just things have been organized, improved speed for performance wise. These auto liquidate values should match perfectly um, what you see in Rhythmic. Actually, I'm gonna, I'll check on that right now. Yes, they do match perfectly. And I have to laugh because there are two auto, there are two ways to get the auto liquidate value. The peak value, which the peak value is then subtracted the threshold, 2,500 to get the auto liquidate. I'm getting it directly from Rhythmic. Um, but there's also a faster way to calculate it, which would be cash value plus commissions, I believe, minus auto liquidate, or, or sorry, minus the threshold. So this is getting really detailed, but when you're in a trade, the PL of the actual trade is updating faster than the net liquidation. So the trade's moving, you got boom, 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 boom all these changes in the unrealized profit, but the net liquidation for some reason is only updated every three or four seconds is what I noticed. So, but I'm still using only that slower updating net liquidation for the auto liquidate value, but you guys should know 
then I'm using the faster updating based on the actual PL of the unrealized trade. I'm using that unrealized value, cash value and commissions, which I've got the commissions column hidden right now. Those three values to calculate the net liquidation for the purposes of this, right? We want to we want to exit if we're trying to exit these PA accounts when I hit that $55,500 goal, which again is for me to be able to withdraw 2000. That's kind of like what I'm thinking is a goal that makes sense. Okay. I want to be out immediately when that value is crossed and with a lagging net liquidation every three or four seconds, there's a chance that it would, it would not get me out as quickly as what it should. So these are all very detailed uh, quirks behind this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up for now. Give you guys a little bit of a bonus here. I'm gonna show you some of my trades. Today I'm not very impressed at all with the way I traded, especially considering how much it moved, but it is what it is. I caught an open, I caught a long on the open when our bias was up, bought the pullback to the 20 EMA. And here, this was that accidental trade I told you guys about where I was in long, but the PA accounts, the other accounts didn't file, so I just exited, ended up being good that I did that. Here, I thought my man was down, decided to sell a pullback, took a 20 point stop out quickly, reverse long, because realizing that, yeah, we bounced off VWAP, and with this kind of a news event, being the Fed chair speaking, it, we, went, we, were, we were heading back up, so I got in, took 30 points. That's what I would implore you guys at a minimum, whatever you're risking on a trade, just 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 go for as much in profit or more. That's what I did, 30 points. Of course, I was disappointed I didn't ride it to the high. And then again, just trying to be cautious, guys. I was trying to get short the VWAP here, missed it by like a point, if that. Same thing here, I was trying to short at the high of this pivot. Right here, should've just shorted the 20, missed that, and then here, I got wigged out, did not want to take a loser um, at the end of the day on Friday, and I knew I wanted to work on my software and other things, so I ended up bailing when this stupid wick formed here on this bar, which ended up being dumb, because yeah, I could have gotten my 20 points and more. I was risking 20 on this trade. So that's kind of a summary of what I've got for you guys here. If you're watching this video and you've never seen my enhanced chart trader, please check it out. You can get started with this for $195 with some basic features and then increasing based on what you what features you want. Enter on the close of a bar, bracket for news events, um, and many other features that I will not cover in this video. So thanks for listening. This dashboard's coming along nicely. Can't wait to hear from you guys with your thoughts. Have a great weekend, everybody.